<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to kindly thank each one of you for joining us live from Masa University, Savjana Putra. I am Suresh Kumar Selvaraj from the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University, and I will be moderating today's session. Today's webinar is hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. The title of the today's webinar is Inappropriate Footwear and Injuries During Sports and Leisure Activities. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the programs offered by the Faculty of Health Sciences at Masa University. Let me share my slides. Okay. In Faculty of Health Sciences, we have departments of physiotherapy, medical imaging, environmental health, occupational safety, and health. So these are all the major divisions we have in our faculty. We have School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, Department of Medical Imaging. Under the School of Physiotherapy, we have Diploma Program in Physio, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, and Bachelor of Physiotherapy ODL mode, which is Online and Distance Learning. Under the Department of Environmental Health, we have Diploma in Environmental Health, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety via ODL program and Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health program. Under the Department of Medical Imaging, we have Diploma in Medical Imaging, Radiography and Bachelor of Medical Imaging, Honors and Bachelor of Medical Imaging via ODL mode. Why join the Health Sciences? So when you look into the benefits of joining the health science programs, which has a high job demand, because these are all the essential services in our community, and you don't have a boring work routine, you get lucrative remunerations, and this is a career you can feel good about. You have an opportunity to work in a variety of settings, and mostly there is a low risk of job redundancy because the works which are done by the health science departments cannot be automated. So in our faculty, we have various bachelor degree programs. So these are all some of the bachelor programs we offer. Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Physiotherapy via Open and Distance Learning, and Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety via Open and Distance Learning, and Bachelor of Medical Imaging Conventional Mode and open and distance learning mode. These are all the entry requirements for all these bachelor degree programs. You should have a minimum GPA of 2.33 in any of the two following subjects in biology, physics, or chemistry, or you need to have completed the A level minimum grade D, or in diploma, you have a minimum CGPA of 2.75 in the related fields. For more details on these entry requirements, you can visit masa.edu.my to get a full information. For diploma program, we have a diploma in physio and diploma in environmental health and diploma in medical imaging. And these are all the entry requirements for diploma programs. Again, the full details can be found in our website. We do also have a Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health, which is a three-year program where the entry requirement is a little bit different than other diploma programs. So for SPM, we have passed in Vasa Malaysia or English and three credits in the following subjects, Max or one science subject or any other two subjects. So again, these details we find in our website. So why MASA? In MASA, it's an, uh, we strive an infinite excellence in what MASA aspires to provide to each of its graduates. And why choose Faculty of Health Sciences in MASA? In Faculty of Health Sciences, we have experience dedicated international pool of academic staffs. You have various study modes, like we do also have a conventional mode, open and distance learning modes. It suits your options 
where you can able to come for a conventional classes or if you're time constrained, you can go for an open and distance learning modes. And we do also have a cross teaching by experts because MASA has most number of health disciplines in a single institution among IPTS. And you do also have an interactive teaching and emphasis on hands-on clinical skills like face-to-face -face and also via the online platform, the skill training has been highly emphasized. We also have a wide list of hospitals, institutions for clinical and industrial placements. And all of our programs are accredited by MQA and GPA with international recognition. We do also offer a dual award program with Anglia Ruskin University, United Kingdom. These are all the various scholarships offered by Masa University. So, Aji Abdullah Academic Excellence Scholarship, Foundation Scholarships, Blue Ribbon Scholarships, School Teacher Scholarship, Family Scholarship, and the Single Parent Scholarship to the eligible students. Again, the more details, you can visit our website. These are all the collaborations and affiliations we have worldwide. And this is an example of some of the pictures, uh, what we have taken when our student went for a mobility program in Airo Susa University, Japan. These are all the pictures taken by our students in lovely professional university in India and student mobility program to the Sri Vijaya University where our student got a skills training from all around the globe. Please feel free to contact us through the MASA website or our faculty Facebook page to know more about our programs or simply you leave a comment in the comment section where uh, during our webinar we will get back to you. Your questions concerning this webinar session can be listed in the chat box for discussion during the QA session. Dear viewers, an e-certificate will be provided for this webinar and to be eligible for this certificate, please fill in the survey form. The link to the survey form will be provided at the end of the seminar and can be found in the comment section. Let us move on to our main agenda of today, the webinar. So about the webinar, it is an injuries during the sports, leisure activity and recreation is a major cause of accidental musculoskeletal injuries and which ranks the second highest after the road traffic accidents. And foot injuries are among the most common athletic injuries, mainly because there are so many parts in the foot which can be easily injured. So let us find out more about this common issue and things to be considered when selecting a proper footwear for an activity to avoid the injury by looking into this webinar from our expert speaker. Let me introduce you to our expert speaker for today, Mr. Muthu Kumaran. He holds a master degree in physiotherapy, specialized in sports physiotherapy. He has almost 17 years of experience in the field of physio. He is a member of Indian Association of Physio and the Pharmacy Council of India. He has served at the Football Association of Penang as the team physiotherapist and also various sports clubs as their on-field physiotherapist. His area of interest are exercise physiology, sports injury prevention and rehabilitation. I welcome Mr. Muthu Kumaran to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Suresh Kumar, for the welcome speech. So I'll be sharing my slides. Right, so today's webinar is about the inappropriate footwear and injuries during the sports and leisure activities. If I take the, the sports activities and exercises uh, which have a positive influence on our physical fitness and also it helps in reducing uh, the body weight, obesity, 
and also some of the pathologies of problems like cardiovascular problems and other uh, chronic health problems. So that's a advantage benefits of exercising and involving in sports activities. But on the other hand, when we participate in the physical activity, it also the source for some unintentional injuries. And due to injuries, uh, it may be used for hospitaliz hospitalization. And particularly, these injuries are very common in the adolescent and in the early adulthood. Majority of sports injuries, up to some dead percentage of the injuries in sports, mostly happens in the lower extremity, in the legs, particularly the ankle region, the prevalent is the, of the injuries more. And particularly the, during the running, the running related ovaries injuries are very common among the recreational runners. Recreational runners means those who are not regularly going for the running or in the other sense you can take as they are not professional runners. So in the recreational runners, around 38 to 39 to 85 percentage of the injuries occurs during the running alone. So this is a study done by uh, Nicholas and Newman and others, a systematic review on the running related muscle skeletal injuries. And they compared between a, a marathon runner and a non ultra marathon runner. And they found out that in the incidence the prevalence of injuries. You can see the picture, most of the injuries happen to the lower extremity, like in the ankle, in the knee, the leg. And that too, the injuries is very more likely in the non-ultra marathon runners comparing to your professional runners. So that's the reason why I told you before itself, in the recreational runners, the prevalence of injury is very high. So physical activity, when you, when you be involved in a physical activity like a sports or running or exercising or some other form of physical activity, uh, this may cause more uh, effect on the, uh, on the feet, particularly when you're involving in the high impact sports. So the footwear is very important when you are involving in the sports and physical activities. If the footwear is improper, we are wearing an improper footwear, which can cause stress to the back and knee uh, and also hips and the feet. Mostly we think that when we are uh, involving, indulging in any sports physical activity, if it's a, if it's a problem with the footwear, uh, the problem only happened in the foot. The problem won't stop only in the foot. The problem increases and goes higher up because our body is interlinked. If the problem happens in the foot, then the problem goes again, it goes higher up to the knee, to the hip, to the back, and like that it keep goes on. So due to the stress on the back and the knees and the hips and the feet, uh, it causes an unnatural position in the joints and, and it causes an improper alignment and functioning of the joint. If you take joints, it has the muscle, it has the uh, ligaments, tendons, everything crosses the joints. So they are also get affected by this improper footwear. Between 63 to 72 percentage of populations are wearing an inappropriate sized footwear. This is the research shows that in the 2018 shows that. So 72 percent of the populations are using an inappropriate footwear. So when you're using an inappropriate footwear, the muscles in the leg, the upper leg and the lower leg are work harder to compensate for it and which goes are fatigue and uh, subsequently causes pain in the leg and the joints of the leg. So what are the risks for the injury when comparing to the footwear? Some of the major reasons for the injury or the risk of injury is wearing a wrong size shoes, wearing a worn down shoes or wearing improper footwear during the activity. We will go to all of them one by one. We are moving on to the wearing a wrong size shoes. 
So when we are using an incorrect shoe size, uh, it causes problem in the ankle, knee, hip, and the lower back, particularly during the running. When you are when you come to the size of the shoes, uh, the weight of the body also will be changes because when you buy your shoes, at that time our body weight is different and later sometimes the body weight may increase or decrease. So weight fluctuations also to be considered. And also uh, some other medical conditions, already the person is having some other medical conditions uh, that may also affect the size of the foot. And the uh, other thing is each and every activity like running or weightlifting or cycling, uh, uh, walking, so all the activity needs a different kind of, kind of footwears. You cannot use the same kind of footwear for all the activities. The next other major risk factor is the wearing a worn down uh, shoes. So if you are using a shoes which is already torn off, already gone, uh, it increases the risk of injury. A study shows that if anyone is using a torn or a worn shoes for four to six months, the, there is an increased risk of injury, particularly in women, the risk is very high. So when you look at the shoes, it says a story about the foot alignment or the body alignment of the person. And certain parts of the shoes will be totally worn off, torn off, and says that that particular region of the body or the area inside of the shoes, it bends for too much of wear and tear, and that's the reason why you can see the particular regions, it is totally torn off. So wearing a worn down shoes is also a major risk factor for injuries. Then is the insufficient arch support. Support. Not all feet have the same shape. Each and every person's feet differs. This is very important within, in the athletic shoes. Uh, mostly, the athletic shoes are constructed based on the based on the person's uh, the arch of the foot, uh, which provides an average athlete with the at most modest amount of support. The next one is the padding. So the padding is also a key component of most athletic shoes. It is designed to, to provide the cushion to the feet. And more than that, it is very important to absorb the shock. So when we are in running or involving in some other uh, physical activity, all the body weight goes to the ground and uh, the ground will give back the reaction, ground reaction force and the ground reaction force comes back to our body. So shoes plays an important role in absorbing those ground reaction force. The next one is the, the footwear traction and injury risk. The footwear traction depends on the interaction between the shoe and the, the sports surface. If I say the footwear traction, it's a reaction between the shoe and to the, the surface, the ground surface. In layman, for understanding, we can use the grip. The footwear traction, we can say as the, the grip. So the grip is very important. A footwear traction has been implicated as a major cause for non-contact lower extremity injury in sports. See, so if the footwear traction is inappropriate, which may cause us a lot of injuries, particularly in the non-contact sports. The sports, we can divide them as contact and non-contact. Contact sports means where there will be physical contact between uh, two persons, uh, like you can tell wrestling, uh, boxing, or football, soccer, 
those who they have a rabi they have a physical contact will be there they are called as a contact sports non contact sports where there is a, no contact between the two players like badminton tennis in all those things comes under non contact sports so the saying that the foot attraction plays an important role for lower extremity injury in the non contact sports so this foot attraction we can divide them as a translatory traction and rotatory traction the traction of the shoes on the ground this translatory traction is very important for the athlete for the start a stop or change the direction and run quickly for all these things we need the translatory traction the rotatory rotatory rotational traction is important for cutting pivoting or their rapid changing of the directions for this the rotational traction is important a common accepted theory is that if the foot traction is increased the contact the friction and the contact between the footwear and the ground is increased it causes increased load to the knee and ankle joints when the load is increased to the joints it increases the possibility of injury risk also when i'm talking about the traction i told you is there is a translatory and rotational traction so when we discussed previously when the rotation traction when the traction is increased it increases the load when the load is increased that increases the injury risk in that the rotational traction is associated with the more injury risk the rotational traction is when you are pivoting are changing the direction and all those times we get the rotational traction so with increased rotational traction it causes increased biomechanical loading to the joint particularly to the the ankle joint and the knee joint and when it is uh, along with that if there is any unexpected neuromuscular perturbation changes and that may results a higher chance of a non contact injury that's why we discussed that before so the traction of the footwear um in related to that injuries are very common in non contact sports like tennis badminton and other sports if you look uh, let's see the the parts of the shoes the the shoes have very part, very sparse like the toe box a four foot the mid sole the upper part of the shoes and behind we can see the heel collar and the heel counter and uh, each and every part is important like the toe box toe box is from the the end of the toes to the tip of the toe we call as a toe box and there is a that is where the fore foot the front part of the foot will be placed in the shoes the mid the middle part is the, the middle part of the foot is placed in the the mid sole and the behind one the rear part is the heel where we have the heel collar which gives protection for the the heel and also the heel counter this is some of the major parts of the shoe, the shoes on the footwear now how do i know i am wearing a wrong footwear or a shoe one of some of the common indicators for a a problem with the foot wear is in a foot wear is the pain in the foot 
when you are using an inappropriate footwear it causes loading too much of loading and irritation and this causes pain in the foot sometimes the pain will be on the toes or the toe nails and it may develop some bruising blisters tenderness and pain all will be there these are some of the indications for that you are you are using an inappropriate footwear apart from the pain sometimes there will be some bruising of the toes if you look at the picture the tip of the toes where the person is having some uh, there is a bruise why this happens basically it is due to the that too tight toe box so what's a toe box uh, as, as i just i said before the gap between the tip of the toes to the front of the toe the, the shoe is the toe box if the toe box is very tight too much of tight there is no space between the tip of the toes to the toe box this causes too much of pressure on the toes and causes irritation and strain and stress and that causes a bruising of the toes the next one is the blisters mostly blisters happens with a problem with the uh, shocks sometimes uh, blisters also can happen when the shoes repeatedly rubs over the foot during an activity like running or some other activities so this can occur when the, sh- the shoe is too loose or too tight okay the shoe should be if the, the shoe is very tight or too loose both of the case can cause us blisters of the toes not only the toes the blister can happen anywhere in the foot even at the heel of the foot also can, blisters can happen the next other common problem is the the plantar fasciitis another indicator for the inappropriate footwear uh, the pain will be on the sole of the foot this happens with repeated slapping slamming your feet against the ground when the shoes does not provide a right level of support for the activity or your uh, have an experience it is significant wear of the toes we are using a torn a wear of toe our shoes can also cause us the plantar fasciitis pain on the the sole of the foot the another is the stress fracture a combination of a poor foam along with the shoes that no longer provide sufficient shock absorption can causes joint inflammation and stress fracture so repeated overloading and the shoes is not adequate enough to provide shock absorption or cushioning to the foot all the weight the load goes to the foot and to the leg and repeated inflammation repeated loading can causes fracture of the bones also can happen and those are called as the stress fractures another indicator is the tendonitis the muscles are which is narrow down before attaching to the bones it become as a tendon the tendon also can go for a inflammation and that is called as the tendonitis this happens if the shoes does not provide the correct or enough support to the tendon around the outer edges of the foot or behind the foot and this tendonitis can happen so these are some of the indicators uh, from which we can know that our foot wear is inappropriate so how i can select the proper foot wear or shoes when you are going for shopping for the to buy the shoes or footwear is better 
go in the evening time because as the day progresses in the evening your feet swells up a little bit and stretches throughout the day and your foot will be slightly larger in the evening so all this planning plan for shopping for the should buying a shoes in the evening time which makes you your shoes always fit despite the change in the size whether it's morning or evening then next one is the embracing the wrinkle row there should be some amount of gap between the tip of the toes and to the toe box after wearing the shoes you know buying when you try buying the shoes after trying the shoes try to check whether your toes are able to move inside the shoe particularly the toe box like playing a piano you try to move your toes if you are able to move your toes freely and if you don't feeling any pressure or stress on the toes is very important i saying that at least an half inch gap should be there between the tip of the toes to the toe box or at a, roughly you can say a thumb width the size of the thumb of amount of gap should be there from the tip of the toe to the toe box your largest toe most probably your greater toe or your second toe so from the tip of the toe to the toe box check there is a gap is there or not at least a thumb size gap is there between these two when you buy the shoes always try try the shoes run and don't walk in your shoes mostly when you buying a shoes in the shop we just wear it and try to walk inside the shop and if you feel for the comfort when you buying a, a sports shoes or or buying for a physical activity like a walking or jogging or running or something like that better try the activity like a running mean if you are buying a running shoe means try to run inside the shop and check whether your foot is having the grip the support and the the foot are spread properly placed properly there is not it's not compressed or it's not too tight another thing is try one size more than you think you need so first try a size which is a little bit higher than you are normally what you buy for example if our size of the foot is 8 normally we are we are uh, we are yeah, size 8 means try to check with a size 9 or half of it because each and every brands of the shoes have different size and fitting which may or may not matches your foot size and other thing is for most of the persons both of the foot are not in the same size one foot is slightly larger than the other so try to go for a, a higher size a half of size above and check the how it fits your foot and then check a size below and repeat it in the reverse manner yeah half size low and half size high and check which size suits you foot then the fit the fit sum but not tight your heel and instep that is the top of your uh, the foot 
should fit well inside their shoes. It should not be too tight. While buying the shoes, when trying for the new shoes one, so lace up the shoes, but don't tie the lace, lace and just make a walk or a run and check, feel that you get the grip and the comfortability of the shoes. That instep should be secure and it should not rubbing or pushing you on any part of your foot. So while you wearing the shoes, the, the inner, the instep, the top of foot or part of the foot, the shoes should not rub your foot or it is not compressing you, your foot. And then next question is, when I can buy a running shoes or any type of shoes, whatever it is, is running or any shoes, particularly when you come to running. The research says that for every 500 miles or three to six months, we have to change the shoes. This is uh, what recommended for an uh, elite or a professional runners. And the same applicable for every one of us. So when you are involving in running activities, either for physical fitness or for sports performance, whatever it is. So after every 500 miles or three to six months, we have to go for a new one. The lighter shoes, will wear more quickly than the cushioned one. So you have to consider that. When you're selecting for the athletic or running shoe, there are certain types of running shoes based upon the foot size of the person. When the person's having the arch, the arch of the foot is very high and is very rigid. We call it as a supinator type of foot where all the joints of the foot will be locked and the person is having high arch, raised arch of the foot and this is uh, called as a supinator type of foot. So for this supinator type of foot, they need a cushion or a neutral shoe where there is no arch support that is in the midsole the middle part the sole of the foot midsole of the foot is having cushioning for running uh, which is able to support the arch and the heel of the foot the second one is the stability shoes uh, this is recommended for the person who having a low arch, the arch is very low or the, there is no arch, totally the foot is very flat, there is no arching on the medial side, the inner part of the foot, if there is no arch, it is totally flat, we call it as a, a pronata type of foot. So in those types of person, those types of uh, foot types where there is a foot flat, totally flat because there is no arch is there. You have to go for your stability shoes where they will provide a middle arch support will be provided. The midsole, in the midsole of the shoes with having more arch is provided to support the particular type of foot. The third one is the motion control shoes. Uh, this is recommended for severe pronator type of foot, totally the flat feet. So if it's a flat feet, it's very severe, totally zero arch. There is no arch at all on the inner side of the foot, the medial side of the foot, there is totally no arch is there. The severe pronator type of foot, they will go for this motion control shoes where 
they giving extra stabilizer and added an inner side edge of the heel counter to give more control and support for the foot the next one is the minimalist shoes here this type of footwear provides minimal inter interference with the natural movement of the foot and due to its high flexibility low heel to toe drop the weight and the slack height and absence of motion control and stability device here we are matching with the the arch of the foot there is no arch there is no arch support like what we discussed before where we are using a motion control or other type of shoes where there is arch support and everything is here will be provided but in the minimalist shoes there is no arch support is there and you can see from the heel of the footwear the shoes and to the toe the front of the, the, the shoes is almost a flat same in the same line and they are called as the minimalist shoes so this minimalist shoes there is a minimum cushioning will be there and it is very lightweight and it is low stability and support so this is recommended for the persons uh, those who are having a normal size arch of the foot there is no arch problem there is no high arch or flat foot is not there if they are having a normal arch they can try for this minimalist shoes the advantage of the minimalist shoes is that particularly running it produces a four foot strike that means the front part of the foot will be striking first when you are running and the heel of the shoes will go for less force or loading so it can have an advantage where the load to the heel of the foot is decreased and these are the in general a summary the various types of athletic shoes like the minimal where there is no midsole where the heel and the toe box are almost similar the next one is a partial minimal like where the thin midsole will be provided in the maximal one a high and high cushion is provided the midsole in the neutral a midsole shock absorbing material is provided and the minimal supportive element is given there in the stability one where the medial support and dual density midsole will be there particularly in the flat foot and everything they go for this kind of shoes or athletic shoes the next one is the the cross training shoes the cross training training shoes are designed in such a way it can be used for different kind of sports activities when the person uh, involves or indulges in different kind of activities like running jogging uh, and wait and going for the gym and everything they're doing it means for those kind of persons they can try for this cross training shoes but this is not a desirable or this is not recommended if a person runs for more than 4 or 5 miles a day and also this is not recommended for the non contact sports like tennis basketball okay badminton in those kind of sports it is not recommended or not ideal for them the next one is the coach shoes uh, which is used for the indoor games like badminton tennis and everything which is more pliable 
and easily allows the movement of the foot inside of the footwear or the shoes while they play tennis or basketball or volleyball or any other sports. The court sho the shoes typically have either a low below the ankle cut or a high ankle cut. Basically, they are designed to provide stability for the inside outside movement of the foot in all the directions. The next one is the walking shoes. Usually, they have a high degree of stability with a smooth thread and supportive arch and an excellent shock absorption. Since walking shoes requires the gait to be the heel to toe pattern, in the walking shoes, they will give more support in the heel part of the shoes. Because when they go walking, the pattern of walking will be such that the first heel will be striking the ground. So they need more support for the, the heel counter of the shoes given more support in the walking shoes. Next is the shoes with the cleats. Uh, this is more used in the field sports like football, rugby, baseball, soccer, and all those sports, they use the cleats, basically to provide the traction for the, uh, for the foot, the grip. Because when you're running on the soft surface or the gas, easily they get slip. To provide, to prevent that, they use the cleats. The, usually the cleats are made of either a hard plastic or a steel. And uh, the cleats that are used for soccer tends to be have tight fit and usually made of a soft leather. In the football cleats, they use a central toe cleat that helps with the traction while cutting and turning activities. In the baseball, cleats are usually have longer and narrow cleats and the sole of the baseball shoes, which are usually made of steel rather than the plastic. So basically, the cleats uh, footwear we used in the field sports. Then hiking shoes, uh, which provides more support and stability and comfort for the foot because when you go for hiking, they have to be uh, moving in different terrain, different surface, ground surfaces. So to adapt to that, they use these kind of hiking shoes where they have a high lace hub and uh, grip and for the greater stability of the foot. Then during the skating and skiing boots, are different. Usually the skates and the ski boots are customized based upon the, the person's feet to provide more arch support and additional stability because the higher chances of slipping. And then it's like the cycling shoes and the golf shoes. In the cycling shoes, they have tight fit on the foot and uh, have a good stable arch. In the golf shoes, the, they have a, a very short cleats in the sole of the foot, the shoes. The cleats are very small, short will be there, so that the feet can be prepared for a solid golf swing. So these are the various types of shoes. So we have to select a shoe based upon the type of activity they are involved. Similarly, for weightlifting shoes, we have to use uh, shoes uh, which is having more grip and support uh, in the shoes, and uh, particularly on the heel, the counter, uh, which is more doing more cushion uh, for the person to squat down deeply. And the persons who are having body weight, okay, they're having who are, who are obese, that they have to go for a shoes which provides more cushion for joint protection. So in summary, while you're going for your new shoes, how to measure your feet, your foot size and the shapes can change over time. Don't rely on the fact that you always want a certain size. Fit your shoes to the larger foot 
as I said before, so the, foot, uh, the some persons have different kind of, uh, both the feet, foot are not in the same size. So we have to go for the shoes which fits both foot. Get measured at the end of the day, particularly in the evening time. Don't rely on shoe size alone. Just like the clothes, the size mark inside the shoe may be different depending on the brand. So select a shoe according to your size of the foot. Okay. So different brand, brand will have different size. A look at the shape of the shoe. Make sure the shoe uh, shape resembles the shape of your foot and fits your foot comfortability. Don't plan on shoes stretching over time. Check the width of the shoes, the ball of your foot, the widest part just before your toes begin should fit comfortably in the widest part of the shoes. Check the depth of the shoe. The shoe should be deep enough to fit your toes. If the, shoe, the shoe's toe box is too small, your toes will be rubbed against the top of the shoe and which may cause us problems to the foot. Check the space at the end of the shoes. Stand up. Make sure there is an off inch, at least a thumb width gap between the tip of the toe and to the front part of the toe uh, foot uh, and to the shoes. Check the gap. Always stand, walk and run around the shoes so that it is comfortably fit well. Do not rub anywhere. Your heel should not slip or uh, slide while walking. So these are the, some of the points to remember while you are uh, by planning to buy a new shoes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muthukumaran, for an insightful presentation. Dear viewers, if you have any question for our speaker, please leave a comment on the chat box. OK, so here we have a question from Mr. Rajan Sundarajan. Generally, how long does it take to recover for recreational runner on mild to severe muscle type injuries? And also, is it depend on the age of the runner as well? Thank you for the question, Mr. Uh, Rajan. Of course, uh, the recovery from the injury takes time. Even though the question is not related to the what drop you're discussing. So following injury, the recovery time depends upon what type of injury it is, whether it's injury to the ligament or to the muscles or to the tendon. Uh, so that, de that decides the time duration of returning back to the sports. <clears throat> okay, so of course, as you mentioned, uh, the age also an impact important factor. If you young age, the recovery will be faster. So when the age is very high, any injury happens in elder person or older person, the recovery time will be very high or the duration takes longer for recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutkumar. I hope this clarifies the doubt. And uh, he also given an additional question like uh, physical activities like recreational running, which creates pressure on the knees. So does wearing of a knee grip or any other protection which is necessary? Uh, thank you for the question. Not always, not always. Uh, because if you are wearing a knee grip or uh, some kind of support for the knee when playing a sports or physical activity, uh, it decreases the functioning of other structures, supporting structures of the joint. Usually we have many surrounding structures like ligaments, muscles, tendons, and whatever that, they protect the joint. So if you're wearing some knee guard or some other grip, something else, uh, those structures will not be, uh, will be functioning properly. And moreover, uh, we, uh, the research says that uh, there is joint sensation, joint feedback is there. Inside the joint, we have some receptors. They provide the sensation, the position sense of the joint, whether the joint is on the ground or in the air, that's all feedback provided by the receptors, sensory receptors. So when you're wearing this knee grip or bandage or something else, those functioning will be affected. So it is not necessary always. If the person is having any kind of problem in the knee, then they can use it. Otherwise, no need. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Pitu. And here we have another question from Madam Janaki. And how to adapt the food to the new shoes? Yeah. So when we buy a new shoes, uh, we cannot straight away wear it and go for the field for running or any kind of sports activity. <clears throat> so we have to adapt the new shoes to our foot first. For example, if it's a professional players, or runners, or whatever the player they are, uh, they buy a new shoes when the existing shoes is almost going to turn off. For example, in the discussion we say that three to six months of time where you can use a shoe. For example, we are going to use the shoe for the fifth month. Fifth month means that's the time you have to buy a new one. So, all even though you buy a new one. Straight away, you cannot use the new one and go to the field. So during your training and slowly uh, you wear the new one, go for a walk, go for a jog, and then you can start running with the new one. So it's a, so you have to progressively adapt the shoes, for the new shoes to your foot. So uh, usually a professional players uh, will do this kind of things, adapting the, the footwear to the shoes. Thank you. I think this helps to prevent the injuries. Yes, of course. Thank you, sir. And from uh, Madam Sabita Samuel, uh, when can I go for a new shoes? Yeah, so as I said before, uh, don't wait for your shoes totally worn off, tearing off. You, once you see that your shoes are uh, not giving the grip or support, because basically the shoes are there to provide grip and support, stability for our foot. Once you feel that it is not providing the support and grip, and if you see that uh, there is a lot of markings, erosions, and uh, one side of the shoes is going off, so that's a time you have to think for a new one. And straight away, don't go with the new one. Buy one, buy the new one, and try to adapt the new shoes foot to our foot, as I said before. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the clarification. And uh, I think uh, this will be our last question from uh, Rajan. And for walking, is it okay to wear tracking shoes or running shoes for a regular walking, I think you're asking? Um, I say, if you are uh, walking is your purpose, you're not going for a running means, you can go for a walking shoe. Because in walking shoe, they will give support that your heel strikes first on the ground. When you're going for running shoes, they are designed to make your forefoot strike first. So if your uh, target is only walking, means you can go for your walking, uh, walking shoes. But if you are, uh, if you say that sometimes I'm going for a walking, I also go use the shoes for a running or for tra uh, trekking and everything means, then you can try for a cross uh, fit sh shoes cross training, bare shoes, bare, you can use the same shoes for other activities like walking, jogging and running. You can use it for various kind of activities. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay, and we have an, one more, uh, another question from Amita Mook. And the question is, slip disc patient need to wear what type of shoes? Um, slip disc, because slipping disc is a back problem. Uh, if the person is having a slipping disc, it means definitely they have to go for some kind of cushion, uh, cushioning, uh, insole support, because this cushion and insole will provide more uh, shock absorption, so that the load may not go to your back and the spine, and it not causes compressing of your disc. So better you can try for a the, the cushion one heel cushion shoes with a more midsole support that will be more beneficial for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have a question from another viewer. Uh, will shoes without arch support make your feet flat? Shoes without arch support make your, your feet, feet flat. will become flat. Uh, I say, as I said before, you have to try your shoes based upon your arch. If you are high, having high arch, you can go for a motion control one. 
uh, or the limited control one. If you are having a low arch, you can go for a stability one. So you have to go for issues based upon your arch. If there is no arch problem, your arch is normal means, you can use a minimalist shoes where there is no much uh, midsole support is not there. That will be uh, better. I think I answered the question. Uh, okay, I think I understood the question clearly. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Muthu, this is our last question. Okay. And uh, shall we go for it? Yeah, yeah please. Okay. Why need to choose a new shoe for evening? Yeah, as I said before, uh, our body swells up as the day progresses. Okay, the, okay. the, the fluids it goes into our body and the foot size of the foot slightly increases as the day progresses. So that's the reason why uh, you can go for a new uh, one to buy for uh, going to buy a new one better go in the evening so that uh, uh, you are uh, it can the shoes can adapt your foot even if the size of the foot increases uh, it won't get gives you any problem if you are involving in activity evening or morning so you don't feel any problem for example if you buy your shoes in the morning time means where your foot is very slim not that much as swelled up so when uh, uh, when you are uh, using the shoe and going for running or something in the evening time, that may cause a rubbing friction and causes pain in the foot. So that's the reason why better always go in the evening. Thank you, Mr. Muthu. Thank you so Thank much you. for detailed explanation. Thank you, Mr. Suresh, for moderating this uh, webinar. Dear viewers, as mentioned in the beginning of this webinar, an e-certificate will be provided. And to be eligible for this certificate, you would need to fill in the survey form that can be found in the link provided in the comment section. With that, we conclude today's session. To our dear speaker, thank you again for joining us and especially thank you for the knowledge sharing. To our keen and attentive viewers, thank you for joining our webinar. We look forward to your comments and participation in our future events hosted by Massa University. For further queries, please contact us through the MASA website or visit our social media and have a pleasant day.